man. Listen to that rain. Isn't that typical? You get a convertible car and it starts persisting down. Fantastic. Anyway, we're in the Mazda MX-5, the brand new one. The first time this car's had a thorough clean sheet of paper, redesign and rebuild since the first ones came out in 1989. So although today is not probably what you'd typically refer to as MX-5 weather, we've got a nice waterproof roof here, so we'll take it out as a regular car and see how she goes. Now, Mazda offered me the chance of the base model 1.5 or the Flash Limited 2 liter MX-5. And I've decided to go for the base one. So the car we're driving is the entry level car, the GSX. It's a 1500cc uh, four cylinder engine, non turbocharged, uh, and it delivers just 96 kilowatts, which is not a lot of power. But this car only weighs 1009 kilograms, so it's pretty light. In fact, it's actually lighter than the Alpha 4C. This colour is the hero colour. Mazda charge you an extra $250 for the privilege of having this sole red colour, but I think it's money well spent because the car just looks really cool. Your seats are all manual. Your steering wheel only adjusts in the up and down, not the in and out. So they've pulled back the specification and the amount of weight that that sort of stuff contributes to the car to the absolute minimum. Things like the sun visor, in the MX-5, it's wafer thin. It's just, uh, it's like one half of the shell that you might find in a conventional sun visor. And the mirror that's on it looks like it could have come out of mum's compact, you know, makeup compact. So it's very much peered back. And I like that about the MX-5. I'm not missing any creature comforts or any of the gizmos. It's very simple, very purist, no clutter, no extra bits and pieces of styling. They've gone right back to the core values and, and they express that with a lovely Japanese phrase which will essentially translate to horse and rider as one. So this is the horse, I'm the rider, we're as one and yeah, it feels that way. Because the uh, cockpit is quite small, you definitely notice the proximity of the rear wheels. We're driving on wet roads now, of course, uh, and I can hear the spray going through the rear wheel arches. It's not a major problem, but you're definitely aware that everything about this car is tight and centered around the driver. So I've got my hat on because I'm really hopeful that soon this weather will lift enough that we'll be able to drop the roof and enjoy the MX-5 as she was intended. Something slightly ironic about driving a car with the roof down but with the windscreen wipers on. Okay, it's really quite unpleasant now. The the rain's continuing to come down, and I can no longer tough it out as a convertible. Too easy. But I really want to get out in the open road, and I really want the roof to be down, and I really want some sunshine, so hopefully we'll come across a break in the weather. Well, I knew if we waited long enough, the sun would come out, and so it has. This is now the MX-5 in its natural hunting ground. Wide open spaces, beautiful blue skies and sunshine. The elephant in the room with the MX-5 is it's regarded as a bit of a hairdresser's car, a bit of a woman's car. I'm not sure why that is, maybe because it's petite and kind of cute looking and maybe perceived as a bit fragile. But having driven it, it's certainly not. It's certainly more rewarding and more hmm, masculine, I guess you could say, than you might perceive. Just because it doesn't have a whole bunch of uh, rubber on the ground, just because it doesn't have a whole bunch of tailpipes, 
for a whole bunch of numbers and its CC rating doesn't take anything away from it, let me tell you. It's very well sorted and it's sorted with the sporting driver in mind, with the enthusiast driver in mind. The steering input and the braking responses are, are so precise because they're dealing with such little weight that uh, you very quickly become expert at placing the car on the road. An intimidating car to drive fast. Some cars, you know, you're kind of like, oh, oh, you hang on and it's all a bit, you know, bare knuckle. And it's very exciting, there's no denying it. I love that sometimes. But for a car where you can drive it at 80 or 90% of its, of its absolute potential most of the time, this is the car you want. There's nothing superfluous about the MX-5, and I really like that. As I've been driving around for the last few days, whether it's been roof up, roof down, in traffic, what have you, it's always seemed to have just what I need when I need it. The power, for instance, you wouldn't think that 96 kilowatts would be anywhere near enough to have fun in a sports car, but you know, it absolutely is. There's no sudden urge that comes on because there's no turbocharger to provide that. It's kind of quite a linear power delivery and it's certainly not going to take your breath away. I'd like to try the 2 litre at some point, but I don't really feel that it's going to offer that much more because although it's another 20 odd kilowatts, it's another 20 odd kgs. So I'm quite happy with this GSX 1500cc version of the MX-5 because it's very much the, the purest, smallest, lightest, simplest execution available. I mean, yeah, you could add on more cylinders, you could add on more tyre rubber, you could add on more exhaust pipes and more, you know, spoilers and things, but you'd be completely missing the point. It's not about what you can add on in this MX-5, it's about what you can take off, what can, what can you do away with? And it's weight, that's what they've come to. You can do away with weight. If they can get rid of weight, then everything can be so much more rewarding. The steering, the braking, the road holding, the chassis balance is just phenomenal. Lightweight, paired back, honest, pure fun. That's what it comes down to, it's just fun.